The first thing I want to touch on is themes of 2024, you know, the first presence event. I always open with themes. What are we in for? What have I received? What have we been seeing? This year is a little bit different. You feel the energy is quite different for 2024. And actually, the trajectory, everything that's been seen kind of unifies the next three years, which is interesting, an interesting passage. Like we're really getting shot into this Aquarian energy right now. You can revisit my presentation from a couple of years ago on what the Aquarian energies will be doing to us and how to stay aligned with that. It's on my YouTube. But here, let's tap into these energy shifts and a few of the themes for 2024. Three years of rapid change. Everything's been all about acceleration for a while. And I feel that the higher realms are focused on this rapid change and our ability to keep up with that rapid change in this now because our our master mastery is going to show right? <laughs> our mastery is going to show as we walk through these uh rapid energy shifts and for um you may have noticed that uh people who were trying to predict what's going to happen or whatever it all got a little milk toasty kind of like more of the same oh tech advances and medical change and this and that and politics and all of that um kind of like more of the same kind of energy. And I want you to tap in to what the infinite Christ field and the folks that are holding uh, unity consciousness are actually uh, responsible for or employed to do over the next three years, because it does shift our service, it shifts our focus, and you won't feel the drama of uh, a lot of those um warnings or predictions about um, just drama in general, uh, I guess is my point. And, you know, as um, as a conduit of that organic ascension, all the focus goes to the reality that you choose or would like to create. And now that we get into co-creation, the energy of unity consciousness itself and your ability to unify with others, you're going to feel it, even just a few people getting together, toning on the land. I mean, I felt this with my sisters and brothers just recently, um, a lot of very strong energy, even when there's just a small group of us. So when there's a large group of us, like unity meditations or during presence or anything that we're, that the higher vibrational folks um, can co-create now, you're going to be so energized for rapid change of your own heart recalibration of your DNA recalibration, a lot of focus on DNA too. All right, first things first. Solar maximum has been upon us for um, quite a few years, but now we're getting into the more um, intense levels of it. And even though major solar wipeouts or anything are not predicted uh, um, for a couple of years, the more consistent solar, not just CMEs and flares, but there's a different energy coming through Solaris, especially in the last year. But now you're going to find like the actual mother plasma and the plasma frequencies are quite different. The reason why we're doing star presence in this first event is to actually prepare you for those rapid different energies that'll be coming through. Transfiguration is amplified. Magnetics are going to change faster than ever before. No, we're not anticipating any flips over the next couple of years. So take that off your drama plate. But these intense energies are aimed at DNA that is capable, hearts that are capable, people, uh, vessels that are capable of using this frequency to create to amplify the higher realms that are already created. It's like solar medicine. <laughs> I love that term, solar medicine. Um, the stargates are going to shift by the end of April, and I will get to that. Um, so we we begin opening very different pathways uh, after that shift point. It's after the solar eclipse. I'll get to that. 
but the the reason why we are um we are directed to embody those energies right now is to create stability and balance and here's here's the reason why as the new energy and the acceleration comes in you may have noticed <laughs> the mental health crisis and the emotional health crisis kind of be, uh, really being uh, uh, quite not just amplified, but people's awareness of it is now coming into play. And yes, there are a lot of different ways that people deal with that or they try to medicate it. You know, it, it everyone has their own choice of how they deal with the energies or how they do with re deal with revelation in general. But this is a highlighted area for all of us who are uh, healers and uh, way showers is to teach people how to deal with the literal changes in their own magnetics, in the magnetics of the planet, the magnetics of the galaxy that are happening right now, what it's going to do to your brain, how to pay attention to your nervous system, all these things. And we're going to walk through this in all of the presence events this year, because I do want to give you uh, tools to give others as we walk through these very wild, it's it's very um, sudden shifts. And we've been tracking like the proton elevations and electrons got weird and, you know, the magnetics, things that we were kind of massaged into getting used to are suddenly um, going to, instead of like uh, a warning shot from the sun and then, oh, and it always does this, it's very unpredictable. And that unpredictability then uh, starts affecting people that are not aware of the ascension. So there's a lot of things that we can do as we walk through this, but it also affects just to be aware, weather, water, uh, the plate system, tech. We'll probably get a little sketchy over the next couple of years. Um, the, the, these little like weird linear challenges start increasing. It is in the highest interest of all concerned for you to be very aware from moment to moment how you are feeling, how the energies are affecting you, not going into complaining uh, about ascension symptoms or the energies or, oh my gosh, look at that, but to really kind of quell, um, even if you're, if you're capable, if you're involved in communities that really um, make people uh, shocked or scared about that kind of activity and really kind of uh, quelling the, the waters, you know, kind of calming the waters a little bit. Uh, when it comes to that level of conversation and going, do you really understand like how beautiful this is right now and how blessed we are to be here to witness that? So we're going to be um, hyper aware of the mental and emotional levels. And on a personal level, really have to pay attention to the stress levels as we walk through this, because all of a sudden you're going to feel your body and your consciousness feel very different. And for those of us who are working on the crystalline DNA and the light body, you felt yourself get so expanded and so wide that uh, the time collapse, uh, you know, linear time is like, wow, it's so pliable and so flexible right now. Always a bit of a challenge to kind of um, uh, allow the linear to be present at the same time that presence is presence, that the I am presence is there because the I am presence doesn't really um, function in a linear space at all. So here's our mastery, right? Keeping that balance. Um, something else to be uh, aware of as we walk through is a revelation of true integrity and values. Revelation is what it is, right? Everything gets exposed. There is no need to wait or focus on, well, I'm really hoping that gets exposed. Or You are the light that exposes what is uh, positive, right? What is beautiful. And if you're tasked with exposing um, dark agendas or negative things, um, a source bless you, that's wonderful but you want to make sure that you're also treating all of that revelation 
with compassion, with patience, so that you're not dragged down when the thing you are focusing on uh, goes away, because it does happen rather quickly. And uh, yes, there's rapid awakening, but I've been told that the folks who are going to um, kind of usher in the ascension are already awake, right? So we are just parenting people through uh, the process if they so choose, but it's kind of like the choices for uh, a mastery level kind of experience have already been made. However, we see the power of unity consciousness that actually gathers up, right? All the souls, all the soul fragments, all the oversoul groups, all the DNA, and just kind of raises all of these groups into the higher realms, into the higher expression of Gaia, right? All of us working together. So it's not the time to be worried or concerned uh, about, oh my gosh, my family, my friends, this person, that person, that politician, <laughs> you know, just, oh, our, we are tasked with uh, really treating what we would like to see or experience in the outside world, how we would like to walk through this with compassion and grace and really using every moment every relationship as our own our, our own way of uh, demonstrating what we would like to see. Note that you will need to keep up with that level of compassion and everything in your personal relationships and really have those transparent conversations that are based on peace making or revelation or compassion or patience or love ultimately unity right ultimately unity consciousness and the more of us that do that in our own life streams right i've had to do it with a couple of people in my own family monad myself having those really heart-based conversations that and like i've said over the last 10 years you open the door a little bit to someone's heart and go i'm willing to can we just have a conversation? And they just open right up. Doesn't mean they're going to follow an ascension path or suddenly become spiritual or anything like that. That's not what we're after right now. We are just amplifying the vibration of unity as much as possible and love, of course. The jumps in frequency may make you feel like you're not keeping up, right? Sorry, I'm kind of check. Um, they may make you feel like you're not keeping up, like all of a sudden, oof, a whole bunch of souls went over here, right? Or or took on a new frequency. Like all of us are working in unity consciousness as a collective now. So if a whole bunch of us are like, yes, and, right? And just feeling that and taking it to the next level, you're going to feel like the pull, which is the whole point of all of the, uh, the mastery path is pull everyone up that's willing, right? So you're going to feel like this beautiful unified thing. If it makes you feel like you're not keeping up um, or overwhelmed or tired, you really have to stay on your vibration. That means stop doing what you were doing yesterday. Stop doing the same thing that you do all the time that created your old reality. Even if it was yesterday, last week, or when you're still doing the same thing, you have to mix it up. You have to make sure that your brain and your consciousness and your nervous system in your heart is staying attuned to this beautiful, flexible, pliable, in the moment state of presence and energies that are coming in here. Create, after we're done with presence today, create three things that you can shift right now that would improve your vibrational level, not just body or tasks. Focus on spirit and mastery qualities. And just how can you create more space for spirit aligned, source informed realities in this now? Wow. <sighs> Mountains giving me a big flood of light. Okay. I guess she likes that. Thank you. So, in order to stay on that primary timeline of organic ascension, it's already 
pulling, lifting every possible strand of DNA and crystalline structure and open heart. It's it's lifting, that lifting, raising, expanding activity is happening. Our task, of course, is to do it right through the body. You're not departing, right? We're not leaving. But if you want, would like to um, start co-creating that reality, you just need to do it in your own personal life stream. So big energy jump in the last week happening right now. It's going to happen again next week, right? Big energies. Feel. If, if you're like, I don't feel anything. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Create some attunements for yourself. You know what's what's keeping you behind. You know what's not allowing you to feel what you want to feel. And even if you want to use the mastery evaluation from last year, from all the courses, and just kind of go through what what do I desire? How can I shift in this now moment? Where are my weak spots? Do that work now because come March, it's a it's a flywheel. It's a snowball. It's really um, going to take on different qualities. Witness the show, but don't embody it. Master your focus, beloveds. Don't make it worse, worse by watching things burn, as I always say, or empowering negativity with your worry and your concern and your words and your inaction, right? Wisdom is empowered knowledge in action, right? So we want to make sure that we're taking action on those things, really becoming those responsible creators in this now. Applied unity consciousness is a theme. It's not that if you're isolated, you're going to miss out because unity consciousness is a, a it's consciousness level, right? If you have avoided people, <laughs> It's not really the the time to avoid people because you can't handle your vibration or you're continually feeling the vibration of others. Um, the wisdom of unity is here. That is the Aquarian thing that we are all moving into right now. So another key thing that I truly want everyone to be aware of and that we're going to dive into in next month's uh, presence uh, event is this awakening of the ocean specifically the Pacific, if everyone's been noticing all the activity around the Pacific Rim and the weather and, you know, delivering water. And if I'm seeing, I'm having a lot of big wave <laughs> dreams, which I haven't had in like 10 years, um, but the Pacific and the mother plasma activations that are happening, these are things that are happening way, way down deep um, below any ocean realm that we've ever explored directly direct contact with uh, master crystals in the crystalline core. Crystalline core getting very stimulated, magnetics changing, literally unlocks things, um, unlocks plasma flows that are going to be very stimulating to the Pacific Rim area. Don't worry about the quakes. Don't worry about the excessive waterfall or the waves. It is what it is. We all know that. Be aware of that ocean plasma um, energy itself. It's just birthing this mother plasma. It's quite beautiful, but there's going to be a lot of underwater deep activations. And of course that affects all the water on the planet and all the water in your body and all the water in the weather. You know, it's all connected. You go through these, just so you're aware, there's a, a lunar eclipse on March 25th, solar eclipse, the big one, because it's going across the USA and we don't have a total solar eclipse for about 20 years uh, that goes across the United States. So this has been on everyone's radar for a while. I actually feel um, it, it's partnered with the 2017 solar eclipse. I've talked about this um, pretty excessively and everyone's you know concerned about the big x that it makes across there some people focusing on texas um i don't feel that is key um, i myself am guided to a couple of different places i may not even be in the path of totality uh during the eclipse but if you want to be in the path of totality just to see it to experience it 2017 was very beautiful this one feels quite different. So if you're guided, tap in 
if you are guided to be in the path of totality, you need to book a room <laughs> immediately and make your travel plans because it's like everyone rushes to the line, right? So uh, be prepared. After that eclipse, there is our first major energy shift uh, just, just after mid-April, around the 20th. And I just want you to be aware, write it in your calendar, kind of tap into it, because everything that happens with the eclipse is what it is. But that's our first major energy shift, is this thing that happens mid to late April. All of a sudden, you're going to feel the fields consciousness, plasma. It's, it's like a sudden amplification of a very different light signature. And it doesn't rest on all the gate work and the grid work that everyone is doing now to prepare for the great solar eclipse. But you may want to be totally on your game for equinox, March 19th. And then those two eclipses that happen right after that on the 25th and then April 8th, right? So it's a little tight window for everyone to really attune your, your gateways. I'm going to be attuning solar disks in the middle of the desert, probably. Um, there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, but make sure that you're totally attuned for that April shift in energy. What we would like to co-create in the second half of our event here is your divine connection as the I am presence, as presence, as pure unity consciousness, ushering in this new era and a direct connection to star presence. Star presence is the pure energy of a unified intention in service to the organic ascension that sometimes in the past came through as light conception. And you have this star presence that would then express in form. And you got masters. And you had all of these uh, way showers that came in. And some of them that were never on the radar and never, don't have anything written about them. Now, in our modern day ascension, we're bringing in star presence and connecting with these stargates in service to flow that light and to actually become a conduit and part of that collective, that pure unity consciousness that brings in this new light, that expresses as that new light, that expresses as that star consciousness, that star intelligence that is the Logos, the infinite Christ, the solar cosmic Christ. As a stargate keeper, this is how that consciousness has expressed itself. And uh, not just uh, revealed to me all the stargates and the dates and everything that's been coming in, but actually the divine purpose, the higher purpose of that activity is to actually become that star presence yourself without having to go through a light conception process where you're actually um, bringing in a, uh, a star intelligence into form through the old process of mastery, right? Of a virgin birth. Now that we're coming into a, a different vibration here on the planet and here in all of these systems, there's an opportunity for us to connect with star presence and actually be in communication, not with star beings, but with the consciousness of a star itself. We become more resilient and more absorbent to the accelerated light. So what this is doing is preparing your mind, emotions, light body, heart, DNA, consciousness, your presence to for solar maximum, right? For more star energies coming in, more plasma, more acceleration. So if we can actually expand out and connect with that star presence that we are, it's part of our essence, 
it'll allow all of these, like the proton acceleration and the electrons that are constantly, protons and electrons constantly trying to maintain balance in your cells, in the atoms. And here we are with, you know, this one go, gets elevated, that one gets elevated. That's a natural part of the energies. But if we actually connect with, rather than the form level, and we connect with the star presence level, we'll actually be able to uh, um, train ourselves to receive light in a different way, recalibrate the heart and the structures to maintain balance when these elevations go off, when the CMEs and the flares and everything like that, that we've been dealing with, but especially, especially with magnetic fluctuations that can make that proton electron balance um, go askew. You know, it's constantly trying to maintain balance, but again, you'll become more absorbent to that new light and a little bit more resilient as we walk through this. In the higher realms, it is known that you may evolve to be a star, not singular individual consciousness. It's a collective consciousness. And many of you have star expressions or are connected to that, myself connected to Paradise Sun, that star level of consciousness that's in service to the ascension. For a lot of you, that is why uh, you have this expression uh, or you have this um, kind of inborn need to serve, inborn innate quality to you that wants to be of service. If you have heard any stories about starseed consciousness, this is the real light signature of what an actual starseed is, right? Is to actually be in alignment with, with a star that is in service, a gateway, right? A realm that is actually Unified consciousness, a whole collective that has ascended and has now decided, made the choice, and has been granted uh, the opportunity to serve as a sun, as a star, as an emanation, as a gateway of those energies. And we're going to walk through some of those stars in service that I am connected with. But you can feel that star consciousness in service to the ascension is actually doing the same thing that Gaia is doing, birthing a star within. This is the birth of the inner sun. And even if you felt recalibration and your heart center changing, there is something happening in this now moment that is ch changing our, our realities, but it's also changing our consciousness. And you'll, you'll be able to feel it suddenly there's a radiance you're going to start feeling like the crystalline stargate at the heart gets very expanded, very wide. Your brain can't keep up and it feels very, very expanded. Realize that Gaia, who is now expression, expressing as an ascension stargate, not gases, rocks, beings as a star, right? But um, the pure consciousness in service, you can feel that as Gaia is kind of releasing all those energies to reveal her higher realms, it's also happening through us. We're going to reveal, right, that higher realm consciousness right through our own beingness. So we have all of these beautiful factors and new energies coming in that will create the conditions for a new experience. And if we, in our own sovereignty, create the conditions for a different experience, you will receive that this year.